On this episode of Black Girl Gone, I tell the story of 16-year-old Tiani Theus, who was found dead on January 8, 2022, in Los Angeles, California. In the years before her murder, Tiani had been struggling after her mother suffered a brain injury during a hit-and-run. The day before she was found, Tiani told her father that she was going to a party with a friend, but she never returned home and no one in her family ever saw her alive again. On January 8th, Tiani's body was found on the side of a highway in Los Angeles. She had been shot twice in the neck. As police began to investigate her murder, they discovered that Tiani was a victim in more ways than one. But a year and a half later, her killer has not been found, and her family has no answers about who killed her or why. What happened to Tiani that night? And who is responsible for her murder? This is Tiani's story. When I first heard about Tiani's murder, it was just days after it happened. I don't remember how the story came to me, but I remember how shocking it was. The murder of a 16-year-old girl who was shot and then dumped on the side of a road should outrage everyone. And there were people that were angry. However, as the days passed and more information about Tiani's life before her untimely death began to emerge, something disheartening happened. Some people, instead of offering empathy and seeking justice, started to use her circumstances as a justification for her tragic death, unjustly shifting the blame onto the victim herself. It was as if they believed Tiani was at fault for her own murder. In the midst of this misguided blame, a crucial factor seemed to be overlooked. Tiani's age. We have to remember that we are discussing the murder of a 16-year-old girl on the cusp of adulthood, but still grappling with the complexity of self-life. And although 16 is old enough to know some things, we also know that you cannot trust a 16-year-old to always make the right decision. Adolescence is a time when vulnerability and susceptibility to outside influences are amplified, especially when it comes to adults who they think they can trust. Teenagers often find themselves yearning for guidance and validation, and they will sometimes seek out those things in the relationships that they create. Unfortunately, when you couple that with any trauma or a desire to escape their circumstances, whether physically or emotionally, Some teenagers become rebellious. When it comes to Tiani's murder, it's important to look at the broader context surrounding her life. A story that includes her struggles, her vulnerabilities, and the circumstances that may have contributed to some of her choices. Rather than laying blame at the feet of a 16-year-old, we have to approach this tragedy with empathy and understanding and focus all of our energy on who killed her. Because... She was a victim, and someone took advantage of her vulnerabilities. And that is why I am telling Tiani's story this week. I wanted people to know not only what happened to her and the fact that her killer has not been caught, but also about what led up to her murder, who she was, and what she had experienced in her short 16 years. Tiani was born in Los Angeles on July 18th, 2005, and grew up in Compton, where she lived with her mother, Teresa. Tiani was her only daughter, and she did her best to protect her from the violence and negative influences that surrounded them. As a child, Tiani filled her free time taking golf and dance lessons and spending time with her family. Her life in those early years appeared to be normal, filled with a lot of love and promise. The golf program that she'd been a part of had many former participants that had gone on to Ivy League universities. And according to her family, Tiani was a straight-A student. But as normal as her life was, she was introduced at an early age to the traumas of life. When she was seven years old, one of her brothers went to jail. And then when she was 11, her older brother, Darian Jr., was shot and killed when he was just 19. Having things like that happen to your siblings at such a young age peels back a layer of innocence. But Tiani seemed to take it all in stride. 
And I get the impression her mother and their relationship was the reason why. Life wasn't perfect, but by all accounts, Tiani's life was happy. But just as she began her journey into her teenage years, everything changed for her. In early 2019, Tiani was with her cousin while her mom, Teresa, was at an event. But she needed the keys so she could get back into the house since her mom was not home. She made arrangements to meet her mom at the event, but what she saw when she arrived would change the trajectory of Tiani's life forever. Teresa was laying lifeless in the street. She had been hit by a car and left clinging to life. Tiani's aunt spoke to the fire pit collective and said this when recalling the horrific events. Quote, Tiani was in the car with my oldest daughter. They were going to meet Tiani's mother, Teresa, and Ven to get the house keys so they could go back to the house. When they pulled up, they saw a body laying in the street. There was blood everywhere. And Tiani said to my daughter, that's my mother. My daughter tried to tell her it wasn't, but Tiani said, yes, it is. I know her purse and I know her shoes. So then my daughter calls me screaming, something happened to Teresa. That's a lot for a 13-year-old girl. That's traumatic. In that moment, everything changed for Tiani. Teresa was not dead, but her injuries were catastrophic. She was rushed to the hospital where she slipped into a coma. And after being in the hospital for a while, Teresa was then transferred to a long-term care rehab facility. But Teresa suffered a brain injury and was never the same, and has remained in that facility to this day. Her aunt said that Tiani understandably had a very difficult time dealing with what had happened to her mom. She had lost almost everything in the blink of an eye. Quote, she did a lot with her mom and would ask me if her mother was ever going to be normal again, and I would tell her I didn't know, her aunt told the Fire Pit Collective. After Teresa was injured, Tiani went to live with her grandparents. Her family said that they all rallied around her to support her during that difficult time. She stayed with her grandparents for a while, but once again, life was going to hit Tiani hard. Both of her grandparents were diagnosed with cancer and became too sick to care for her. And so she began staying with different family members. Sadly, both of Tiani's grandparents eventually died. In less than a year, she had gone from a normal kid taking golf lessons and dancing to witnessing her mother after she was nearly killed and losing two of her grandparents. She was only 14. The events that had taken place in her life would have been too much for an adult to handle, so we can imagine the difficulty that Tiani was having. And her behavior began to change. Like most teenagers, she used social media as a kind of journal. She wrote about being lonely and sad a lot, and that vulnerability is what may have opened the door to the predators that awaited After staying with other relatives for a while, Tiani eventually moved to Los Angeles to live with her father, Darian Sr. According to reports in the New York Times, this move was hard for Tiani. Her entire life had been turned upside down, and now she was having to move to a place that she didn't know as well. Not long after moving in with her dad, Tiani began rebelling. According to her father, who spoke to the New York Times, Tiani went from a straight-A student to ditching class and sneaking out at night. Darian said that Tiani also began running away because there were things that he just wouldn't let her do. He said that they would argue a lot. At the time, Darian was working at a clothing store, and sometimes he would work as a security guard at night. He said that Tiani would take advantage of the fact that he worked a lot and would leave while he was gone. She had also been meeting people on social media, and her posts were becoming increasingly more attention-seeking. And looking through her social media, most people would see a fast little girl being grown. But what I see is a child screaming for attention, even if it was negative. 
even if it was inappropriate attention from grown men. Whatever Tiani was looking for, she thought she could find it this way. And there were predators out there all too willing to take advantage of a child. In the months after moving to L.A. with her dad, Tiani was struggling. From what I can gather, her father was aware of what was going on and what she was going through. It's just not clear to what extent. And I know it's easy to judge her father about what he did and didn't do. But as always, we have to remember that we don't know what was happening in someone's life or what resources were available to them. There are a lot of parents who have been through similar things and have had no idea what to do. But Tiani was falling deeper, and her father and other family members were losing their grip on her. She posted videos of herself drinking and smoking, partying, and fighting. Offline, according to the New York Times, she called her father on a few occasions to save her from places that she had gone. Within three years, Tiani had gone from a normal kid living with her mom in Compton to a broken, depressed, rebellious teenager. She had lost a lot in a short period of time, and it had changed her. By the end of 2021, Tiani was struggling to find her path in life, and as the new year began, she had no idea that her life was getting ready to come to a brutal end. On January 7th, 2022, Darian said Tiani came to his job in Inglewood and told him about her plans to go to a party with a friend who reached out to her on Instagram. Now, we don't know the details about the identity of this friend or the exact location of the party if there was one, but according to a family member of hers, a young woman picked her up that day. Now, in an interview with Fox 11 in L.A., Darian opened up about his unsettling intuition that night. He said that he had a sense of dread and felt like something wasn't right. He said he asked Tiani not to go. But despite her dad's apprehension, she made the decision to go anyway. Darian said that the last thing he said to his daughter before she left was, I love you, and he gave her a hug. When Tony left her dad that night, her father had no idea that it would be the last time that he saw his daughter. Little did he know, the seemingly ordinary decision was set into motion a chain of events that would forever alter their lives. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you're a mom like me, then you spend most of your time worrying about other people. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Therapy has so many benefits and it can help you deal with the everyday ups and downs of life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suitable for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash GirlGone today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash GirlGone. On January 7th, 2022, Tiani went to her dad's job to tell him that she was going to a party. It was the last time he ever saw his daughter. Less than 24 hours later, he would find out why Tiani never came back home. When Tiani left her dad's job on the evening of January 7, 2022, where exactly she went is unknown. It's also not clear who she left with. She told her dad she was going to a party, but Tiani had also been meeting older men on social media, and so it's possible she was going to meet one of them. There is no reporting about whether Tiani was ever seen by anyone else that night, but 
By the next day, Tiani was dead. At 8 a.m. on January 8, 2022, the LAPD began receiving calls about a person lying on the 110 freeway near the Manchester on-ramp near South Figueroa Street. When police arrived, they found the victim was deceased and had two gunshot wounds in the neck. The body was quickly identified as Tiani. Someone had shot her and then threw her body out of the car onto the highway. When police notified Darian that they had found Tiani dead and that she had been murdered, he was devastated. He had already lost a son, and four years later, his daughter was also dead. Both murdered, both killed by gun violence. Despite the issues that his daughter was struggling with, he never imagined that her life would end so soon, so brutally. Despite the fact that a 16-year-old girl was murdered and dumped on the side of the road, it took several days before the local media in L.A. began to pick up the story. But even once the media began to report on Tiani's murder, her family said that in the hours and days after the murder, the police didn't seem to prioritize Tiani's case. But as investigators began looking into Tiani's life— information began to surface that she had been doing sex work and was meeting older men online. And had it not been for her family and the community around, Tiani's story may have gotten swept under the rug. But the problem was, a 16-year-old cannot be a sex worker. They are a minor and victims. And minors who perform sex work are usually being trafficked and were introduced to that work by an adult a predator. If you don't know already, most people are trafficked by people they know. It's rare for someone to be snatched off the street and trafficked. For young girls like Tiani, it can happen after they meet someone online, or they can be introduced to it by older people in their lives. And so Tiani wasn't a sex worker. She was a victim. On January 18th, Ten days after her murder, her family held a vigil to bring awareness and to ask for information. Her cousin Lakeisha spoke to the media and said this. And we're not talking about an adult. We're talking about a 16-year-old child. She was thrown on the side of the freeway like trash, and she's a child. She meant something to her family. An officer with the LAPD also spoke. To be left on the side of the street of a roadway, 16 years of age, it's just insanity. The evil that's behind that, to take a life, a young promising life. The outrage in the community was starting to grow. People, especially Tiani's family, wanted the person or people who murdered her to be brought to justice. And they were not going to allow any insinuations about what Tiani had gotten involved with to stop people from caring about her and finding her killer. Community activists, along with her family, began demanding a reward be offered for information. They highlighted the fact that a week after Tiani's murder, a young woman named Brianna Kupfer, a UCLA grad, had been stabbed to death inside a department store. And within days, there was a $250,000 reward being offered for information leading to her killer. $50,000 was provided by the city, and the additional money was raised through donations. Community leaders and activists said that because Brianna was a young white woman and Tiani was a 16-year-old Black girl, Brianna's case was getting more attention and resources, and they demanded that Tiani receive the same attention. A press conference was held a few days after the vigil, where activists from Project Hope and members of the California Highway Patrol made a direct appeal to city and state officials to offer a reward. Quote, the CHP is conducting the criminal investigation into Tiani's death, and California elected officials are the representatives the family must make the award request from since her body was dumped and recovered on California state property. It's important that Governor Newsom and the state elected officials realize that Tiani Theus's life mattered, he added. 
The fact that someone could shoot and kill a young woman and dump her body on the side of the freeway like she was trash is outrageous. Najee Ali from Project Hope said to Fox 11. On January 26, it was announced that a $115,000 reward was being offered for information about Tiani's murder. $50,000 would come from LA City Council, $50,000 from the state, $10,000 from the county, and an additional $5,000 from Project Hope. It was welcome news for her family, who felt like offering a reward would help them find out who killed Tiani. And it showed that her life mattered. But during that press conference to announce the reward, the Los Angeles District Attorney also announced that they believe that Tiani was possibly the victim of human trafficking. D.A. Gascon said that the court records show that Tiani had been identified as a victim of commercial sexual exploitation of children, a victim. And he didn't go into detail at the time, but the information was jarring. On January 27, Tiani's funeral was held. Three weeks after her brutal murder, her family was able to lay her to rest. And after the service, several of Tiani's family members, including her father, spoke to ABC7. We have to be there whenever we can. And I can say, and I'm really sorry to say, we could have done better by Tiani. I lost a piece of my soul, I feel like. You know, this is the second kid I lost in the last four and a half years. This is the second one. Tiani just didn't die. She fought for her life. And it's just so disheartening to know that one of your little children had to fight and you weren't there to protect her. A community activist who attended the funeral also spoke, and he said this. For too long, many young African-American girls, babies, 16-year-olds, have been snatched into human trafficking and very little is being said. And it's time for that to stop. In the weeks following Tiani's funeral and the information about her being a victim of sex trafficking was released, her story began to fade from the headlines. And the police continued to investigate the murder, but with very few credible leads, they were unable to find information about Tiani's killer. In April 2022, three months after her murder, the reward for information was raised to $120,000. With such a large reward being offered, her family and police hoped that it would encourage someone to come forward. But in the months following the increased reward, no one came forward. Tiani's murder took a toll on her entire family, who worked tirelessly alongside community leaders and activists to bring attention to her story and bring her killers to justice. In the year after her murder, no new information was released. But on the one-year anniversary of her murder, members of her family and community gathered for a press conference to mark the grim anniversary and to let everyone know that they are still fighting for justice. One year later, we're here to say her life did matter. Her family and the community are here still fighting and demanding justice. Please, if someone out there knows something, please call Highway Patrol or LAPD. It's now been a year and a half since Tiani was murdered, and the person who killed her has not been found. As of the recording of this episode, there hasn't been any recent updates about where this investigation stands today. Tiani Theus was just 16 years old, a child whose life was tragically cut short. The sadness of her story lies in the fact that she had her whole life ahead of her, with countless possibilities and dreams awaiting her. And my heart breaks knowing that her potential was never fully realized. If only things had been different. If only her mother had not experienced that fateful accident. Maybe then, Tiani's life would have taken a different path. One filled with more joy, growth, and opportunities. Grief, especially for someone so young, can be an overwhelming emotion. 
And I wish Tiani would have found a healthier and more constructive outlet for her pain. But the harsh reality is that Tiani, like far too many other young Black women, fell victim to the clutches of a sexual predator, an insidious trafficker who preys upon vulnerability. These people lie in wait, seeking out those who are more susceptible to manipulation and exploitation. Regardless of how you view this situation, Tiani was a victim. She was an innocent soul who became wrapped up in a web of darkness, stripped of her innocence, and subjected to unspeakable horror. And so while listening to Tiani's story, we also have to acknowledge the systemic issues that perpetuate such tragedies. The people who killed Tiani have not been caught. And so we have to keep sharing her story until they are. Tiani Theus was found dead in Los Angeles, California on January 8th, 2022. She was shot and dumped on the side of the 110 highway. She was 16. If you have any information about Tiani's murder, please contact the California Highway Patrol. May Tiani Theus rest in peace. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. We'll be back next week with a brand new story. In the meantime, make sure you follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter 